If directives allow us a large amount of flexibility to optionally produce code only when circumstances arise. The example file we're going to start off with contains three variables with three different value types that we'll be using throughout this lecture. We also have a little HTML to create the output of our if directives. Let's begin with a simple if directive to check whether the type variable is equal to the string element. First, to declare the if directive, type in at if. Then we need the condition. This determines the circumstance in which something should or should not happen. So let's first target the variable named type and then say equals equals. The reason for the double equals is because we're going to compare the values to the left and to the right and make sure they match exactly. Now we can see if the type variable's value matches the string element. After the statement, add in opening and closing parentheses. If the statement beforehand is true, whatever is contained within those opening and closing parentheses will be executed. And so if that statement is true, we're going to add a content CSS property with a string value. In this case, the statement is true as the type variable has a string value of element and we're checking it for a string element. Thus, this statement is true and executes the code. But what happens if the statement is false? How can we then deal with the false statement? Well, if I set this to check the type variable for a string hello world, this invalidates the statement as the two values don't match. So what I can do now is use else to deal with a false statement. I'm going to add in at else and then set it to add a content CSS property with the value of nope false. So as this statement is false, it can't produce the first piece of content because that's only if the statement is true. So we say else and it produces the second piece of content because it is false. So it's defaulted to the at else. Now you don't have to stick with one if statement on its own and then just an else. You can use else if. This allows you to chain multiple if statements together. So I can now type in at else and then if. Now we can type in the next statement we want to check for. We could type in any statement, but we'll stick with the variable type as it correlates to the statement above. This time we'll use a different comparison operator, which will check to see if the value of the variable type is not equal to hello world. To do this, type in an exclamation mark followed by the equal sign. Then we can add in a CSS property and value if this is true, which in our case, it is true because the values don't match and the statement is checking if they indeed don't match. So we will have the produced code. Now let's look at changing this else if statement. We want to check the no value variable does not equal null. Null is a special string that is a value saying that there is no value assigned. So it's in essence a nullified value. This statement is now false as the value of the variable does match the null string value. Now we have two false statements, so the output produced comes from the final else statement that has no condition for its output. Next, let's review an if statement that contains numbers and an equation. Let's make an if conditional that checks the num variable is equal to 10. This will produce the width CSS property with the value of 10 pixels. 
We can now go ahead and invalidate this statement by saying num equals 11, which we know it equals 10. So this invalidates the statement and we can use the at else and set the width to zero pixels. Next, we can add one onto the variable num's value. This means we can have equations in if statements. This validates the statement as num plus one equals 11. Thus, we get the CSS code produced. We can also store the equation in another variable and call it back in the if statement. Also note, we could write the equation directly without any variables in the if statement. Now let's chain the if statements together and look at all the different comparison operators. Also, I'll just neatly format the code that we have and then I'm just gonna change all of the values so that we know which statement is true. The first comparison operator we have is the equals equals. This makes sure that we have an exact matching value. So we take the equation, which we know the equation is 10 plus one, which equals 11. So we have 11 equals equals 11, which it does. So this statement is true and it produces a width of 11 pixels. However, I could change that to say 12 pixels. Now the equation, which is 11 does not equal 12 and therefore it invalidates this statement and we don't get the width of 11 pixels anymore. So what SAS then does is say, right, well, this is invalid. Now let's go to the next statement and see if it's valid. So we say if, then we're grabbing the equation, which is 11, does not equal 11, which as we know, the equation does equal 11. But if I was to change that to, let's say 10, well, now this statement is true because the equation 11 does not equal 10. And so we get a width of 12 pixels like so. So I'm just going to change that back. And so now once I've changed it back, well, the equation does equal 11 now. So this statement is invalid. So we've got this is invalid. This is invalid. Then SAS goes down to the next one and says, is this if statement valid? So I say if grab the equation is greater than 11. Well, the equation equals 11. It's not greater than 11. So if I bring this number down, let's say equation is greater than 10, which we know it is, 11 is greater than 10. It produces the width of 13 pixels. I'm going to change it back to 11. So now I've invalidated this statement again. And so it goes on to the next statement. If equation is less than 11, well, it's not less than 11, it's equal to 11, but I can say 12. And so now the equation, which is 11, is less than 12. And so we get a width of 14 pixels. Now I'm going to invalidate it again and change it back to 11. So it realizes this is invalid now. It goes on to the next if statement. Take a look at the equation, which equals 11, and it must be less than or equal to. So it's allowed to be less than 11 or equal to 11. And of course the equation is equal to 11. So this statement is valid. I could also set this to let's say 12 and it would still be valid. If I set it to nine, well then it won't. It won't be valid. The reason being is because the equation equals 11. 11 is not less than 9 and it's not equal to 9 and therefore this statement is invalid. Then on top of that, we also have the next statement which grabs the equation and says, is the equation, which is 11, greater than or equal to 11? It is not greater than, but it is equal. So if I was to, let's say, make this 12, well, no longer is the equation greater than 12 and nor is it equal to 12 and therefore it invalidates this statement. So now we get a width of zero pixels because we're finally left with the at else which has no condition on it and it's just the fallback in case all of these other statements fail. And you can just take this and run with it. You don't have to have the if statements within CSS selectors. You can have them produce CSS selectors and produce snippets of code depending upon conditions. And we also have the SAS syntax, which again is a little bit different. We have no encapsulating opening and closing parentheses. Rather, we have indentation with our if and if else statements within SAS. So there we are, if statements that really do add flexibility.